Today we're going to talk about wet form or effusive form of FIP. Now we have many, many cats that come to our Facebook page and they say that their, their cat has been diagnosed with wet form FIP based on blood work, uh, based on simple appearance, but um, FIP is much more difficult to diagnose than with a simple blood test. In fact, there are no simple blood tests. And that's what this video is gonna go over today. So if you have a cat you think or has FIP wet form or a vet suggests it, please stay tuned and we're gonna go over Dr. Addy's chart and we're gonna see how FIP is diagnosed. This is an FIP diagnosis flow chart from Dr. Addy of Glasgow. She is an expert on FIP, and we use this on our Facebook group um, all the time. Um, I'm not advocating that you personally make a diagnosis or anyone other than a trained professional, but you may want to print this out and present to your veterinarian to um, help you and your veterinarian come to a diagnosis. But I just want to review it for for lay people. There's some medical jargon here. I want it just to explain it. Um, we get um, every day on the Facebook page, does my cat have wet FIP? And people send us the labs and things. And this is the chart that we follow. And again, we're not trying to make a diagnosis. We can make suggestions, offer our opinions, but really you need to see a veterinary professional. So the first thing uh, your vet will do is take a history. Has this cat been in a recent multi-cat environment, such as a breeder, a rescue shelter, or other source of FIP exposure as a new kitten? For Bella, she was uh, with her mother. And if you recall in another video, I explained that FCOV, which is the coronavirus, um, is everywhere in the environment. And if one cat has it, like mom cat, then when she licks her bottom and she licks her baby's face and mouth, then that vi coronavirus will go into the kitten. And in 5% of the kittens, that virus will change from a benign form to a deadly form called FIP. So Bella probably contracted the virus, the coronavirus as a kitten. She, um, someone in her environment had coronavirus. Um, somehow it uh, got transmitted to her, like mama licking her own butt and then licking Bella's face and then the coronavirus would go in. Again, this is a, an enteric virus. This is an intestinal virus. This is not a respiratory virus at all. So it's not a Khaleesi, it's not herpes. It, it, it's not like that at all. Um, so, I'm just saying that the FCOV is a benign virus, but in 5% of kittens, it can mutate to a lethal form. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Another thing of the history you'll need to, is the history of stress. Now this, this is her um, opinion, I'm talking about adoption, bordering, neutering, things like that. Um, the researchers are kind of out on how much stress does stress actually cause the mutation? Um, in Bella, uh, it seems that her spaying did not cause the mutation because it was there, they would discovered it at her spay. And we don't think her vaccinations caused it either, but the researchers are still trying to study the role of stress in this environment. Um, and then if you look here, you see the effusive form, clinical exam, non-effusive form for step two your vet will kind of assess whether this is effusive. Now, effusive means fluid, so that's pretty visible. The belly will swell up, it's called ascites. There's a lot of protein in that fluid or non-effusive form, which is much more difficult to detect, and that's what Bella has, but today we're gonna focus on this side of the chart, which is the effusive form, the wet form FIP. So some of the clinical signs would be your, um, your cats may be bright or dull. So the eyes may be bright or dull. He may be lethargic. Um, and these tend to be in young kittens, so we're expecting a kitten to be active, but they may be a bit more lethargic. Moderate um, pyrexia. Pyrexia means uh, fever. So um, cats fever 
temperatures about 100 to 102.5. So if, if it's above that, let's say 104, that's definitely a fever. So, uh, but those v fevers come and go. There's abdominal distension or ascites. I've explained that. Dyspnea, sometimes instead of in the stomach that the virus can do damage and cause effusion to happen in the chest cavity. So the, the cat may be having difficulty breathing. And pericardial effusion, um, there could be effusion when they do an x-ray and they may see some fluid around the heart. But um, this is just a general, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but these are kind of the, the symptoms that you may see. And number three, what's most important is that effusion or that fluid needs to go for testing. Never ever take out that effusion without insisting that it be tested so you can test it positive. There is a thing um, called a um, an in-house um, titers test for FCOV and that is with blood. However, again, that only tests whether there has been exposure to the coronavirus. Again, the coronavirus is not FIP. The coronavirus is not FIP. FIP is a mutation of the coronavirus. So just because your kitten tests positive for the titer does not, 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 not mean that your kitten has FIP. This diagnosis is a multi-process. You need to do all these tests to really determine whether it is indeed FIP because it's such a serious illness. And there are so many other diseases that mimic the signs and the symptoms of FIP. So, um, so an analysis of the effusion. So some vets will take uh, the effusion, they will draw it out with a syringe. Do not do that on your own. Um, and if it's pus or bloody, she says that FIP is unlikely. If it's straw colored or clear, it's FIP positive. But never, ever, ever should a diagnosis be made only on the color of the effusion. That does not say anything other than this is a colored effusion. And also she says that FIP is possible. It doesn't say that definitely that cat has FIP, just possible. Again, this is a multi-step diagnosis. The next she recommends is a Revolta test, and I'll put a link in the description to how to do a Revolta test. Um, it's not done as much in the US as it is done in Europe, um, but it's a quick in-house, very low-tech way to determine whether it, the effusion has um, high protein levels. So if it's a negative Revolta test, it's 93% unlikely to be FIP. And if it's positive, again, it's only possible that it's FIP. Another test is to check the protein levels of the effusion. So here, it, um, it, if it's less than 10 grams per liter, it's not FIP. If it's less than 30 grams per liter, FIP is unlikely. Um, and then if it's greater than 35 grams per liter, then it is possible. Again, just one of many tests that need to be done. The albumin globulin ratio um, is very much indicative of FIP. So if it is greater than 0 0.8, then Dr. Addy says it's not FIP. Yet if it's less than 0.8, FIP is possible. And Bella's um, albumin globulin ratio, which is AG ratio, was eight. So she's eight, but she does have FIP. So again, not one test alone can make a diagnosis. Uh, the next is the total white blood cell count. If it's greater than two, then FIP is unlikely. If it's less than two, FIP is possible. Um, you need to identify the cells that are in that effusion. If it's mostly lymphocytes, then it's not FIP. If it's neutrophils and macrophages, then it is possible because the uh, virus loves to invade the macrophages. Um, again, there's an in-house FCOV, which is a coronavirus antibody test. Um, if it's negative, it's unlikely, but still possible. But if it's positive, again, FAP is possible. 
the next stage would be, let's say you have mixed results in this, she suggests you go to the next stage, specialized laboratory testing. So she does this, and I haven't seen this done very often, but the alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, if it is less than 500 uh, milligrams, micrograms per milliliter, then it's not FIP. If it's greater than 1500, then FIP is possible. Uh, there's an immunofluorescent antibody test. So if it's the coronavirus is seronegative, then it's not FIP, but if there's a high titer, then there's a possibility that it is. Um, and then the virus detected by um, RT-PCR in the effusion, um, if it's negative, FIP is still possible because there can be some false negatives. And then if it's a positive, then it is considered that it is FIP. Um, another test um, that is not on here, and I'm not sure you're this is IF, but um, Bella had IHC, which is an immunohistochemical staining, where the virus was actually seen in the macrophages. So if all these unlikely, not FIP, if all these results uh, point down to here, uh, there could be bacteria found in cytology, uh, could the lymphocytes could be predominant cells found in the effusions. There could be cancer cells. The protein level is less than 30, uh, the AG ratio greater than 0.8, and there could be white blood cells in there. And all these things could point to um, further diagnostics that need to be done, either by ultrasound or biopsy. Um, your cat could have a, a tumor heart failure, liver disease, uh, peritonitis, hernia, or others. In our FIP group, we have seen liver shunts. We have seen um, toxoplasmosis um, and other parasitic infestations. Um, we have seen, well, I guess this is peritonitis, uh, septicemia. We have seen other, other diseases, other problems with the cat other than FIP, even though it may look up here like it's going to be FIP, but um, really it's something else. To review, um, today I talked about how to diagnose FIP, and I'm not advocating that you diagnose or that non-trained professionals diagnose your cat. This is just to, to help you understand how complicated it is to diagnose FIP. All the different tests and steps that should be taken to confirm that diagnosis because um, as you saw on this part of it, it could be something else, something else that is treatable and you do not have to put down your cat. Again, this is from catvirus.com. It's FIP diagnosis flowchart and you can go to Dr. Addy's website and get a copy of it and present it to your veterinarian so that both of you can help your cat the best way that you know how and try to come up with a diagnosis and we hope that you your cat does not have wet FIP rather it's some other some other disease that can be treated